Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and as you can see, we're going to do another very large canvas. Now, you may have already seen, but early this week we hit 200,000 subscribers, and it's really exciting. Thank you so much for your support. And I thought to celebrate, we'd drag out one of these big canvases again and try a really large mountain scene. Now, just like last time, I'm not going to try to knock this out in one day. I'll split it up into several weeks, and if you're enjoying this and you're excited to see more episodes on it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for future painting videos. All right, let's get started. Now we're going to start today with some clear gel and white and I'm going to spread this around the canvas. You can see I've got kind of a crazy amount of paint on my palette. I'm planning to do a lot of painting today. Maybe later on, later on down the road, <laughs> we may not do as much painting. You know, I won't. I'll just focus on a mountain or a highlight. You know what I mean? And, and maybe we won't need as much. So kind of plan ahead. That way you don't waste paint. I'm planning to do a lot today. I'll just scrub this around. This is what I normally do before blending my blues and stuff over the sky. We won't put any down on the mountain. You see also I've got a very, very nice detailed sketch, a line drawing on here. Very, very important. Without that, it would be difficult to just make up a shape of a mountain that looked realistic for this size. Because once you get up here, the whole painting kind of, it's hard to see it. <laughs> there we go. Next I'll grab some blue and a little white, not a whole lot of white on the the big two inch brush and let's see here let's drop in a little bit of yeah our sky I like this <laughs> just have to see if this looks good up here you know you can't can't necessarily tell exactly how much it's gonna blend and all that good stuff depends on how much white you get in your clear gel and white mix <laughs> there that looks good now I'm just allowing this to feather on down by the end of the day, your forearm is going to know that you are doing a big painting. If you guys want to try something like this, this is a four by eight foot stretched canvas and it is a lot of fun to use. It's really cool. And it's very, very long compared to, um, you know, format. I mean, I know it's long just like physically, it's really long, but you know, the format is long and wide it, and compared to like a, a regular size, kind of a square canvas, you know, 18 by 24 is actually pretty rectangular compared to others as well. But this one's even more landscape. So, you know, kind of choose a, a scene that works well with that format. There we go. It's going to take you a while. Just work from one side to the other painting sky. Now I've changed to a clean brush and I'm going to blend some of these areas. I'm not trying to destroy all this pretty Variation between light and dark that we got built in because that would be kind of a waste. There we go. You just work from one side to the other. It doesn't matter. You can jump in the middle, work outward. It just really didn't make a whole lot of difference what you do. And as you come up, I always start here at the bottom. And as you come up, the brush gets darker. And that way you don't drag the dark paint down and it doesn't become one flat tone all the way across the sky. All right, I like the brush strokes. I still want to see a few of the brush strokes. Now I've got purple mixed into the brush. It's a very light purple. And I'm gonna kinda use this to sculpt in a couple of clouds using a larger brush than maybe I would normally do clouds with. And I may still change the filbert. You don't wanna, you know, you don't wanna change your painting techniques just because your painting's getting a little bigger. <laughs> there we go. I like this. So I'm trying to think, I'm looking around at my sky, kinda trying to think where I want stuff to go. I want these little clouds to go, maybe. I'm thinking right here, maybe. Right there would be a good spot. I've got some ideas of where I want this painting to go, but I'm not locked in. I'm gonna be kind of loose with it and allow the allow the sky sort of to go where it, where it wants to go. But not as crazy as it sounds, you know. Want, go where it wants to go within reason. <laughs> I won't let it go too crazy. But I just, you know. With painting this big, if, if something happens and I like it, I'm just going to leave it. You know, I'm not going to say, oh, well, I want this cloud to look a certain way. I'm just going to be happy with whatever looks good, if you know what I mean. This is just the dark part of the cloud. We'll come back and put our highlights. Nothing different, just a little bigger than normal. I'm going to walk over here. <laughs> not every day you get to say that when you're painting. I'm going to walk over here and paint this side. <laughs> Fun. Lighter, softer clouds toward the bottom. There. I think this will look really pretty. This kind of will help the, the warm colors will help to tie in with the warm colors. It's going to be one of those beautiful red 
mountains, the ones like you find in Sedona. Very, very pretty. If you guys aren't familiar with it, definitely search it and, and see some pictures. It's really the coolest place. Well, one of them. I guess there's a lot of amazing places and mountains, aren't there? Canada being another one of my favorites for mountains. Now with our filbert brush and a lot of white, and I've tinted it with a little red and yellow to make a peach color. I'm gonna slather this right on. And there's a lot of paint. I really was not sparing with my paint today because I just didn't want my forearm to burn tomorrow, if you know what I mean. So this is really slippery and wet compared to what I'm normally used to working with. There you go. I like that, that looks good. It's starting to glow and that's what I want. I want this kind of glowing. These, these have enough red in them that we can assume this is, this is maybe early morning or evening, you know, or be late morning or early evening. That would be kind of what I would think at least just by the, the color. There, that's pretty, isn't that nice? I know it looks gloppy, but I'm just, I'm thinking once we blend it, it's gonna be just about right. So I'm gonna plop the rest of these little highlights in and then we'll jump right back and show you something else. Probably blending them. After all, that is the next step. <laughs> I'm having fun with this one today. I forgot how much fun these were. Now we're gonna go ahead and blend. And I think that the only trick here, it's not really a trick, but because I've got it glopped on the way I do, I gotta hold the canvas so it doesn't wobble. See that? That's, don't want it wobbling too much, so press down on it. I'd say the trick here is kind of going with the, the way you want your cloud shaped. So on this side, I might, you know, rotate the brush this way, kind of like a little circle. And, and this way, we only have to stroke it one or two times. And we won't, it won't be muddy. We won't lose what we've already put in. And, you know, three weeks from now, if we say, <laughs> drop my paper towel, yikes. Three weeks from now, if we say, well, you know, we want those clouds a little brighter at the end of the painting or whatever. We can do that. It'll be dry and we'll use dry brush blending techniques like we do in acrylic. There, so no worries. We'll just kind of go as far as we can with these clouds today. We won't make, won't make any difference if we don't knock them out totally. There we go. Let's see, I wanted to go the other way. This way I just go and kind of shape the clouds. Mm, isn't that pretty? You can leave more brush strokes. You can get away with a little more texture because this canvas is so big. It really needs it, actually. It likes texture. In fact, up here, it's not too bad. We might be able to, might be able to put some more paint on there and do some more blending here in a minute. As long as you've got some, some of your reds in there, kind of a peachy red color, you shouldn't get any mud. You should just kind of melt right in with the background. It actually looked very pretty. <laughs> there we go. Just keep doing this over and over again until you have a, a soft sky that you're happy with. Now I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> underpaint our, our little mountain here. I'm not finished with the sky, but before I make any final choices on color and value and all that good stuff, I really wanted to get at least most of this canvas covered. So I'm gonna do that now. There, I purposely went over my sketch just a bit with my, with my sky. I can just barely see it through there. And honestly, who cares if we change it a little? Doesn't make any difference. This is just to get us a nice shape. There we go. Now, the, the thing here is I've went ahead and mapped out all these different angles and they're not perfect, but they certainly give it a nice effect of dimension. And I don't wanna lose those because it's really, really easy to just sort of drop the dark in and then lighten it a little. See that, there's the horizontal lines. I won't necessarily keep those intact. I can do those, that's not so bad. But I wanna keep the shadows and the, and the light sort of separated just enough <laughs> there. Anyways, that's just my plan. If you guys wanna paint the whole thing in one, you know, in one color, that's okay too. I'm assuming it's probably not doing it on a canvas though, this size. Feel free to, to jump in and actually I'm make this a little bigger. Feel free to jump in and do this painting on a small canvas and send me a picture of it. I bet you it turns out great. There, nice color. This is gonna be very red. Lots of iron in this rock. Now I'm just adding a couple extra bits of shadow. It helps to keep the whole, you know, composition working, the whole 
mountain structure still intact for me. Now, one thing I wanted to just show you, when you're painting something like this, which is extremely red and a little bit abnormal, something that's very important to do is take a little bit of blue. I've got my, my one inch brush here going. Take a little bit of blue and white sky color and on the back side of these mountains and in the cracks and all that good stuff, I want you to sparkle up, maybe a little black into that so it's not crazy blue. <laughs> I want you to sparkle up that side with a little blue. And we'll do this more as it dries. It'll mix a little now, maybe with that yellow that we put in that red. I don't know, might, might get some funky colors going, but for now, see that? I'm just dragging in a little blue. What this does is it softens it. It brings everything together with color. Very, very, very important. There. If you don't do this, your mountains will look out of place and they will never fit in the painting. This is a reflected light and it's beautiful. I like it. I like doing stuff like this. There. Now I spent a couple more minutes and I put on some brighter color up here. And now instead of blending with like a two inch, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to blend with my little blender brush. This may be a little small for the job, but it's very, very soft. And I don't think we would be able to blend this again with a stiff brush. It would just mush into the blue. And I don't want that. I want it to stay kind of bright and make it look like it's shining up here. The alternative is we could wait till next week and, and go over it again, which we may or may not do. I haven't really decided yet. It doesn't matter. You don't have to decide till later. There. I'm hoping that most of this sets up by next week. I think it will. Looks like it. It probably will. You can sometimes tell, you know, your whites will be the last thing to dry. And your, like, your umbers will be, like, the first thing to dry. So, you know, you kind of learn you kind of learn what's going to dry and what isn't. I bet you that mountain is dry in two or three days, actually. And the sky, it may be closer to a week. All right, let's move right over here. Keep blending. I've got a paper towel handy just to knock off that extra paint. And like I said, I don't care if some of this kind of goes soft. I can always re-highlight it when it dries. Because I did not want to, didn't want to put a sparing coat of paint on here, like I said already. Just would have taken too long. And my forearm didn't want to do that. <laughs> there. Now over here on the right, I think this mountain should, this mountain is from about, where does that thing start? <laughs> from about there to there. Kind of hard to see them, see what I mean? Can't see it when you're close up. Back there, it's really easy to tell, see? But anyway, this back one is, is lighter. And, and I'd like, I like that. I think it adds a little depth. Now, I will say you can add a little oil or clear gel into your brush to thin it some because let's face it, we're, we know we're not going to highlight today. We'll highlight sometime next week or you know, whenever. That'll probably be next week because there's not much else to do, right? But anyway, the point is you can allow this to dry or at the bare minimum, at least let it tack up. And so that way it might be easier to cover the canvas. You won't have to spend all day up here. Well, you still might have to spend all day. <laughs> you won't have to spend all week up here. How's that? Nice. Next, I'll load up a nice green color. I'll throw a little red into that too. And that green was made from black and yellow. Was not made from just sap green. The reason is it gives me a, a much more dull green. I don't want a nice vivid, you know, normally I want that nice vivid green. That's also why I put the red in there because red and green make brown. So the last thing I want to do is a, have a rainforest green up here or a worse than ever green green up here. No, I want a desert bush green today. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> There's a ton of different kinds of greens that you can have. And I'm going to be very, very, very careful to put some great color variations. <laughs> a lot of varies in one sentence, isn't it? But, <laughs> oh boy. Time to, <laughs> time to wrap it up here pretty soon. But anyway, I'm just dropping in some of this color just where there's going to be bushes, you know, desert bush color. It's kind of wiggling a lot. Maybe I'll set my palette down. I've got a table over here. You guys have probably seen that table before when we do other things. There. And it just, if you just push your finger on the canvas, then it kind of helps to absorb some of the shock. Keeps it a little tighter. And there you have it. And just keep filling in everywhere that needs bushes with this color. And then we can go back and stipple in the bushes later. 
Well, that's all the time we have to work on our painting today. It'll be fun to pick up where we left off next time. We'll do some beautiful highlights and shadows that should bring it to life. This was just the underpainting after all. Also, I wanted to thank you again for all your support. It really does mean a lot to me. Also, don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching.